So in this problem, we're considering this ordinary differential equation, dy dt equals ultimately t squared minus 2y. So the right hand, it's a first order equation. So we can make the slope field, but the right hand side has both a t and a y in it. Makes it more complicated than typical. If it were just a t, that's easy. Like if we're just t squared, because that's a pure antiderivative problem, you just integrate. The answer would be one third t cubed plus c for a general solution. If it were just a negative two y, that would be also relatively easy. Separation of variables would work. You could also just guess. If dy dt is negative 2y, the general solution would be c times e to the negative 2t. Function would have a derivative equal to negative 2 times itself. But this is more complicated, both t and y. We're after a function whose derivative with respect to t is always t squared minus 2 times the function. This function is one function that works. And part a was all about checking that that works. Let me show you, as a preview of next week, how you can figure this out. So here's our equation, dy dt equals t squared minus 2y. If I subtract, or if I add 2y to both sides, an equivalent way to write this differential equation is like this. And if you write it like that, <clears throat> so here's our standard form of first order equations where the right-hand side is our F function and it helps us draw slope fields and apply Euler's method and stuff like that. Here's an alternative way of writing the same equation. And when you write it this way, all of a sudden it feels easier to guess the answer. Why? Because I'm after a function whose derivative plus two times itself is always T squared. The yeah. It can't just be like an exponential function, for example. The general solution does involve exponential functions, but this equation by itself can't have a solution that's just an exponential function. Because how can you have an exponential function whose derivative plus two times itself is always t squared? That can't happen. It also can't be like a cosine or a sine. Seems reasonable to guess a polynomial, doesn't it? Like something involving t squared or t cubed maybe, or maybe we can get away with guessing guess y equals some constant a times t squared plus some other constant b times t plus a constant. It's guessing, but it's a reasonable guess because I'm after a function whose derivative plus two times itself is always t squared my work. I just got to figure out what A, B, and C are. So plug it in the left-hand side, find its derivative. With respect to T, it'll be 2AT plus B. Add two times itself. 2AT squared plus 2BT plus 2C. Simplify. The quadratic term is 2AT squared. The linear term combines these two, 2A plus 2BT. And the constant term combines those two, B plus 2C. What's the right-hand side of the differential equation? Well, you see it's just T squared. Right-hand side is T squared. What do I want? For this to be a solution, I want these two functions to always be equal, no matter what t is. The only way that's going to happen is if 2a is 1, that thing is 0, and that thing is 0. System of equations in a, b, and c. 2a is 1, the coefficient of t squared there. 2a plus 2b is zero and b plus 2c is also zero. That's the system of linear equations I need to solve for a, b, and c. Now you could put it in a matrix, you could do row operations, but it's actually easier just to solve it as it is. That implies a is one half. 
Then I can plug that into the second equation and get 2a is one plus 2b is zero. So 2b is negative one and b is negative one half. And then plug that into here and get negative one half plus two C is zero. So two C is one half and C is one fourth. A is one half, B is negative one half, C is one fourth. Lo and behold, A is one half, B is negative one half, C is one fourth. That's how I figured this function out. You didn't have to do all that work that I just showed you. You just had to check that this works, differentiate it, left-hand side, also plug it in and place a Y there, see that you get the same thing when you simplify. That's all you had to do. But there I showed you how I, how I figured this out. Then I also say, find a value of K that's gonna make this a solution no matter what C is, where there is an exponential function there. But wait a minute, didn't I say just five minutes ago, exponential functions can't solve this differential equation? They can't solve them by themselves. But if you figure out the appropriate value of K and add this function, then the result can solve the original differential equation. So let's do that now. This is a preview of lots of things. You're going to be doing problems like this next week. So again, A was one half, B was negative one half, and C was one fourth. And then we've got this other term, C e to the kt. And I'm wondering what value of k will make this solve the differential equation, if any. There is a value of k that works. The left-hand side of the, I'll do the original differential equation. This is of original. Is just dy dt. So differentiate this, get t minus one half plus kc e to the kt, right? Chain rule. But the, but the right-hand side of the original, it's t squared minus 2y, t squared minus 2 times all this. Simplify the t squared terms. Cancel, right? Because two times one half is one. Negative two times one half is negative one. The t term is negative two times negative one half times t is positive t. That looks good. Negative two times one fourth is minus one half. That looks good. What's left? I got a negative two c e to the kt. Question is, what value of k will make these two functions always equal to each other? Two. Set equal, that implies k is two. Or, oh, excuse me, negative two, sorry. Negative two. That's what you should have done on that part of that problem. Question? Um, no, because it would be a problem there. This would become zero. This would not become zero. Yeah, well, unless C is zero. K is zero, then you will get the constant. This is zero. Actually, never mind. The yeah. Okay. What else are you asked to do here? So we just found the value of K that makes that a solution. K is negative two. Then the rest of the problem is about the contour map of this function and how it relates to the slope field and solution curves. This is important too. So this picture on the other side, the gray parabolas are called level curves. This is a multivariable calculus idea where the f function is constant. f of ty is 
t squared minus 2y. If I set that equal to a constant, call the constant m, I can graph those curves in the plane. How? Solve that equation for y as a function of t. So the graphs you can see as functions of t are going to be parabolas that open upward because the coefficient of t squared is positive. Negative m over, over 2 is really the y-intercept. When m is, is 4, negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. That's the y-intercept there. When m is 2, negative 2 over 2 is negative 1, the y-intercept of that one. When m is 0, the y-intercept is 0. When m is negative 2, the y-intercept is positive 2, or excuse me, positive 1, excuse me, negative 2 over negative 2. Negative 4 over negative 2 is positive 2. That's the y-intercept when m is negative 4. These gray parabolas represent curves in the ty plane where f is constant. You can make such curves without thinking about differential equations at all. You do that in multivariable calculus. Or you will do it if you're in it right now. We can relate it to differential equations, though. One solution is shown in red. How do you relate it to ultimately to differential equations? Draw the, use it to draw the slope field. Why? How does it help? Because the differential equation says dy dt, the slope of a solution curve, anytime it touches a given point t comma y, is the output of that function at that point. Meaning, you got to draw line segments that have those slopes. Along the curve where m is 4, draw lines with slopes of 4. Along where m is 2, draw lines with slopes of 2. I'm not getting this perfect, but. Where m is 0, draw lines with 0 slope. Hey, notice this red curve, which is a solution, has a 0 slope right there. Not a coincidence. And when it touches m equals 2, it's got a slope of 2. And when it touches m equals 4 up here, it's got a slope of 4. This one, you have slopes that are negative 2. This one's slopes are negative 4. That helps you draw the slope field and helps you draw solutions. And in particular, we're drawing a solution. We're, draw, we're just drawing the slope field. OK, so we are drawing solutions to follow those. So one example of an approximate solution would be something that looks like this, for example. Uh, and it would seem like if I if it's the way I drew it here, it's got to cross that level curve again before going up this way. That would be one example of a solution. Another one might look about like this. Another one might look like this. This is a tricky one. You got to cross this with a zero slope. I'm drawing more than you needed to. In here, it's got to have a negative slope, a slight negative slope, before coming back to a positive slope over here again. Solutions that start up here are going to be going down like this before curving back up. And remember, by the existence and uniqueness theorem, these curves can't touch each other. They're distinct solution curves. They can't touch each other. So there are some approximate solutions you should have drawn. 